And I guess we've all had this, as we're all Christians, we've all had this experience. Wow! 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 wow. I haven't heard anyone say it yet, though. No? Wow. Well, there you go. You got that, John? Yep. Good. I didn't hear you say it, though, mate. <laughs> Being a modern student, etc. And not only that, we go on to hear that these, these four people who would say they're Christians, not necessarily the same. G'day. Today I want to introduce you to four friends of mine. They would all say they are Christians, of a sort. I wonder if you will recognise any of them. First up, we have Fence to Feel Good, or Fenno to his mates. He runs around to every meeting he can find that has some aspect to do with Christianity. He's done Alpha at least 12 times. Christianity explored another 12 times. And Fenno... Well, he believes in God, and he likes to always feel good, regardless of anything else. When he goes to a church worship or prayer service, usually uh, on twice on a Sunday, it's for that good entertaining time. He's got no time for doctrine and teaching, and thinks sermons and church are utterly mundane and pointless. And Fenno, he sees no point in acting out his faith, because it doesn't make him feel good. As you can probably tell, Fenster's prime reason to live is to feel good. The way to holiness for him and being a Christian is by going to as many religious events as he can and feeling good because of it. Fenno, well, he's holy in the eyes of the world, isn't he? And then there's Anya. You've got to meet Anya. Anya all action by name and all action by nature. She runs around like the headless chicken, doing good to everyone, being nice and all that sort of stuff. And you believe God exists, but thinks the commitment part of Christianity is just a bit too much. And Anya, she's involved in such diverse groups from Greenpeace to the local homeless shelters, and she's got no time for church on a Sunday or for doctrine and teaching. Anya, Anya wants to change the world. Her prime reason to live is to do good and be active. The path to holiness and the point of Christianity for her is being involved in doing good deeds. The society and community she lives in thinks she's a holy person because of it. And then there's Thornton. Thornton Top Heavy. He's holy in his society and community, but for different reasons. He's got so much knowledge about God in his head, it's amazing his head doesn't explode. How it doesn't leak out of his ears, no one knows. He can quote Augustine, uh, Martin Luther, John Calvin and John Stott verbatim, complete with page references and book titles. His passions for doctrine and doctrine alone, and this helped him to a double first at Oxford Uni. Thornton, he isn't concerned with living out his faith. That's for the poorer people. He's only concerned with reading more about God. Thornton's prime reason to live is the accumulation of knowledge. He believes the path to holiness is by gaining as much head knowledge as he can possibly store inside that massive head. And lastly, there's Kalina. Now Kalina's a bit different. Kalina is foolish in the eyes of the world because she has a firm and strong faith. She prays daily and reads her Bible fervently. 
She's involved in the church, attending prayer meetings and homeless tea runs. She goes to a local Bible college for evening classes to learn more about the God she wants to serve. Kalina is getting head knowledge, but wants to apply it to a life so it goes from head to heart. Kalina's prime reason to live is Jesus Christ and to be Jesus Christ to other people. To be as much like Jesus as she can be, growing more and more like him constantly. Knowing that she is doing this makes Kalina feel good as she can see herself growing and living out her faith in Jesus who is her joy. Let's read these verses together. Romans chapter 8. <coughs> Moreover, we know that to those who love God, who are called according to his pattern, everything that happens fits into a pattern for good. God, in his glory, chose them to bear the family likeness of his son, that he might be the eldest of a family of many brothers. He chose them long ago, when the time came, he called them. He made them righteous in his sight, and then he lived them to the throne of life as his own sons. And then we read another hmm. verse, 2 Corinthians. Sorry? Good version. I think that's the message. Hmm. Yeah, this one. But all of us who are Christians have no veil on our faces, faces but reflect the mirrors of the glory of the Lord. Of the Lord. We are, we are transfigured by the Spirit of the Lord in ever increasing splendor in the image. Now, what does that describe you? No need to answer that, that's a rhetorical one. <laughs> and we looked at those four people earlier Fenno, Anya, Thornton, and uh, Kalina. And I'm sure we've all met people during our lives within the church, not just here, but in the other churches that we've been involved with. And we found out that Kalina was the only one really desiring to follow Jesus closely and to live as a disciple. So what does it mean to live as a disciple, a follower of Jesus? Well, <laughs> when we became Christians, when we decided to follow this Jesus, we started an exciting journey in the Christian life. And success in the Christian life is no accident. I'm sure you would agree with that. It's a direct result of living in harmony with the basic principles of life as set forth in the Bible. And the Christian life is not a matter of expecting spiritual maturity to occur overnight, though I'm sure sometimes I wish that it did. It might save a little bit of pain. And the Bible lays down standards and tenets for living, uh, which we need to follow with God's strength, because God lives within us. And that's to, so that we can continue to live at peace with God, we are with other people, and with ourselves as well. Because sometimes we are quite difficult to live with, or am I alone in that? <laughs> And as we apply the principles and guidelines as set forth in the Bible, we are transformed into the likeness of Christ. Jesus. Which is the journey we are on, according to those verses in Romans 8 and 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And Jesus himself said in John 10.10, 10, I've come to bring them life in all its fullness. And this is achieved as we allow Jesus to live this life through us, so that we start to think and respond just as he would to the people and the circumstances around us. And we need to learn how to see circumstances and people from his point of view, rather than reacting on the basis of our own point of view. And when we respond to those circumstances based on our own feelings and point of view, that's when conflict, stress, tension and depression enter. When we respond to those circumstances by looking from God's perspective, it builds and shows a transformed character as we become more like this Jesus. And as Christian disciples, we, are, we gain spiritual maturity and our lives are continually transformed into the image of Jesus who is to be our King. 
And as it occurs, it affects our relationships and permeates every aspect of our life. Our work, our study, our leisure time, our play time, our home life, our relationship with each other. And people will want to know why you and I are so different. And this town will be changed to the glory of God, will it not? If Christians were be acting like Christians. There's enough Christians here. There's ten churches or so. How about that for a wow factor?